Okay, this course is called Stochastic Analysis and its Financial Applications. What is that about? So stochastic analysis refers to the analysis of stochastic processes. So in your first years of studies, you've done some calculus uh, involving functions. Right? You've learned how to minimize function, compute, computing derivatives. You've learned how to compute averages by computing integrals. You've learned how to solve ordinary differential equations or partial differential equations to model things in all sorts of sciences, uh, including finance. Now, all of these things are deterministic, right? They don't take any randomness into account. They don't take any lack of information into account. So what's a stochastic process? Well, it's a family of random variables. So random variables will replace numbers for us, and stochastic processes will replace functions. So we're going to allow all the objects that we can use in our model to carry some level of uncertainty. And in a sense, what you did in a course like you know, probability theory is understand what is the analog of all the basic objects of uh, calculus, starting with the real numbers, when you add uncertainty. And now we want to go one step further and move all the way to the resolution of ordinary differential equation but in the context of uncertainty. We're going to call that stochastic differential equations. So you want to link families of, uh, um, uh, of random variables through some equation that is a, a stochastic analog of an ordinary differential equation. And you can use that to model things in all sort of sciences. Now, interestingly enough, the story of that field, you know, very often fields of mathematics have some sort of origin in physics. But in the case of stochastics, it actually started in finance. Now, a lot of people will think that uh, really stochastics started with a extremely, one of the very, very many, these four uh, famous papers of Albert Einstein in 1905. Albert Einstein in 1905 wrote a paper on Brownian motion, gave a mathematics description that eventually led to uh, the realization that atoms did exist. There was a debate at that time. That was proved experimentally in 1906 based on Einstein mathematical derivation. And a lot of people consider that to be the starting point. That's actually historically inaccurate. Uh, the starting point of stochastic differential equation, what is the topic of this course, is in a thesis in 1900 by someone named Louis Bachelier. And that's a thesis about speculation. That's a thesis about prices of derivative products on um, the Paris stock market at that time. And what, uh, what Bachelier did is by studying, uh, first in practice through his own personal experience, the evolution of certain prices on the stock market, he found a way to describe them using families of random variables, what we know called stochastic processes, and realizing how these equations that the, the process need to satisfy connected to uh, more classical objects in mathematics, in, in particular partial differential equations. So what we do in this course is that we're going to study um, the calculus of stochastic process. So first, you know, we need to understand what's the analog of sequences, what are the appropriate notions of convergence, what are the analog of, uh, say, an integration theory. We're going to see pretty rapidly that the analog of a derivative is something very tricky because the typical stochastic processes tend to be nowhere differentiable in a classical sense. But we'll find ways to, to go around that and go all the way to being able to solve the stochastic analog of an ordinary differential equation. And then we apply that to finance. So realizing that one could do that was the beautiful intuition of Louis Bachelier that led to a certain model of what we call rational pricing in finance. And it was rediscovered and really started the field of modern finance uh, in the world of uh, Black Scholes and Merton in the 1970s and, and um, led to them receiving a, a Nobel Prize in, in economics. So we'll see that these are models where you solve a stochastic differential equation uh, in order to model the value of a portfolio that's made of stocks and some cash, and you use that portfolio to mimic the evolution of the value of a certain contract, what we call a, a derivative. And by doing that, you'll be able to find a rational price. So will be able to find a way for a buyer and a seller to agree on the price of a certain contract. You can think of it as an insurance product in a way that's rational. So there's only one economics principle in this entire course is that if two people agree on the price in a rational manner, nobody should enter the contract willingly losing money. Right? 
right? So both the buyer and the seller should have expectation exactly zero, and that, as we will see under in a certain mathematical model, uniquely determine the price of the contract. So these are the financial applications we're aiming for, but as you would see, all of this mathematics is, has its origin in finance, has uh, had a very productive uh, interaction in both directions between, between finance and mathematics, but it is, in essence, independent of finance. It's very much a part of mathematics where you extend all of calculus, allowing uh, all of the objects to be random, right? So variables from a probability space into, say, the real, if these are real numbers here. And of course, this is application in physics and biology and also for the sciences. Uh, this is absolutely critical to uh, the understanding of electronics and the understanding of noise in, in the electronic uh, circuitry also. Um, but I won't get into the other applications. Our applications will be focused on finance. That's the, the nature of this course. But fundamentally, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our calculus that we've learned uh, in first year and in second year, and we're going to replace the real numbers by random variables. So everything is going to become infinite dimensional because the random variable is a map from a probability space into R and the space of all, say, integrable random variables is an infinite dimensional vector space. So there's very close relationships between stochastic analysis and functional analysis. And those of you who are taking both courses uh, would probably appreciate these relationships. But you don't need to be uh, at the level of a functional analysis course in your mathematics really to appreciate that. I've designed the course in such a way that it's accessible from either uh, the probability theory course or the analysis to course. Uh, ideally, both uh, will give you the, the best possible background, but if you have only one and not the other, you should still be fine.